Since 1980, the corn ethanol industry has received $45 billion in ongoing government subsidies. That support is now costing $6 billion out of the taxpayer's pocket every year. What are these subsidies for? Well, one is a tax credit for blending ethanol with gasoline, which sounds like a good idea since ethanol reduces petroleum use and is good for the environment. The other subsidy is an import tax on foreign ethanol, particularly sugarcane ethanol from Brazil, the second biggest producer after the U.S. Now, why is that bad, you might ask? Uh -uh. Because the tax squelches competition. And competition is good because it equals better quality ethanol and lower prices at the pump. And we could all use lower prices at the pump. Mm -hmm. Now, these two main subsidies expire this year. And oh, so, please. understandably, corn ethanol producers are lobbying hard to extend the perks they've enjoyed for three decades. What? But really. Do they still need this money to protect their industry? Six billion tax dollars per year? A lot of people don't think so, including business and anti-waste groups, environmental organizations, and editorial writers at leading media outlets nationwide. Even nonpartisan government agencies make the case that it is time to reform U.S. ethanol policy. There's even a new study by leading agricultural economist at Iowa State, in the heart of corn country, by the way, which finds that Americans would benefit from eliminating the tax credit and tariff. Huh. According to these economists, cutting the subsidies and tariff will reduce ethanol prices, and that means savings at the pump for drivers. The Iowa study also debunks a number of overstated claims. Claim number one. Without subsidies, the U.S. will suffer catastrophic job loss. Uh, in reality, productive farmers and ethanol refiners will keep their jobs. Claim number two. Without the tax credit and tariff, uh -oh. domestic biofuel production will plummet by 4 billion gallons. Uh-oh. Actually, the Environmental Protection Agency has already mandated rising use of renewable fuels. That means, even without the tax credit and tariff, domestic ethanol production will increase to 14.5 billion gallons yeah. by 2014. Claim number three. Without the tax credit and tariff, America will become dependent on foreign ethanol. Imports will rise modestly by 2014. They will. But will account for only 5% of the U.S. ethanol supply. This way. Greater access to clean, affordable, and renewable fuels like sugarcane ethanol would actually help diversify U.S. energy supplies. Here's the rub. Not only has the government mandated that we use more and more renewable fuels, some in Congress also want to keep giving them extra money, 30 billion to be exact, out of your pocket. Look, the U.S. and Brazil are the two largest ethanol producers in the world. So shouldn't they just work together to create a competitive open market? Mm -hmm. Brazil has already moved in that direction. They've ended their government subsidies and eliminated tariffs. Isn't it time America did the same? Even without the extra money, Thank you very much. the future for corn ethanol looks bright. So it's time Congress ended the tax credits and trade barriers. America needs a tax break, better fuel prices, and energy diversity. America needs clean, affordable alternatives like sugarcane ethanol. Tell Congress exactly what you think yeah. at CutTheTariff.com. <laughs>